When one thinks about the culture of ancient Africa, it can be easy to dismiss their architectural contributions to the world. Today, I will cover a few of the most impressive feats of architecture and ingenuity of ancient Africa. We all know about the pyramids and the Sphinx, but there are some lesser known works that are just, impress just as impressive. Aksum was a kingdom that was developed in the area of Ethiopia in the first century of the Common Era. In fact, at the civilization's height, it was considered to be one of four world powers, along with Rome, Persia, and China. While the origins of the Aksum kingdom are unclear, what they have left for us in terms of architectural importance is not. Behold here the obelisks of Aksum. These obelisks reach 80 feet tall and they weigh about 160 tons each. They are erected in what was once the capital of Aksum in Ethiopia. Erected around 2,000 years ago, you can imagine the type of effort that was required to accomplish such a feat. It took an estimated three years to simply accumulate the raw materials to begin building just one of these obelisks and up to another 10 years to chisel the stones into the correct form as each and every stone was carved by hand. It was thought that these obelisks served as markers for underground burial chambers. One of these obelisks that is no longer standing today. Its remnants are still there in the midst of all the other obelisks in Aksum. Anyways, this obelisk was even larger than all the other ones. It was it comes in at around 110 feet tall and is known as the Great Stell. Um, now this obelisk was thought to have collapsed during its erection process or shortly afterwards. And I personally cannot even begin to imagine the type of ingenuity that would have been required to erect an object of 110 feet even 80 feet with the smaller obelisks. Um, the amount of ingenuity required to do that without modern technology, without cranes, without, you know, modern engineering. Now, these structures, you might, might have seen something similar to these structures before. Um, the most famous example can be seen in our nation's capital in Washington DC um, and the, as you see here is the Washington Monument. This goes to show the widespread influence of African architecture. Another monument that you should be familiar with is the Great Wall of China. It is known to be the first man-made object that we are able to see from space. The Great Wall of China is roughly 5,500 miles long and the wall was primarily built uh, to keep out invaders from the north. 
Now, what if I were to tell you that there was a wall made in Africa for a similar purpose that is even longer than the Great Wall of China? This such wall does actually exist and is called the, the Wall of Benin. Now, the Wall of Benin spans an estimated 9,900 miles long uh, compared to Great Wall of China, 5,500. So a good at least 4,000 miles more of wall um, in Africa here as we see in the Great Walls of Benin. Now, the timestamp of the construction of these walls is not very accurate. Um, and let's be honest, that much wall would have taken an enormous amount of time uh, in order to construct that. Now our best estimates place the construction of this wall to be to be during the first millennium of the common era. So our best estimate is that this spanned about a thousand years uh, to create this wall. Now we said the wall, the purpose of the wall was to keep out invaders. Um, this wall was not a straight linear wall. Uh, the wall inter was interconnected between over 500 different settlements um, in the area and it covered about 2,500 square miles. Um, so we have over 500 settlements within that 2,500 square mile area that were all protected by these interwoven walls. Um, now to give you an idea of how massive of a project this is, this was. It was estimated that the wall took over 150 million hours of digging to construct. Now, when I see a big number like that, I mean, the number is too big to even, you know, put it in terms of it's too big to mean anything to you really so I, I want to break that down into days into years so you know doing a little math we see that that's over six million days of labor which equates to over 17,000 years of labor now of course um, the labor force is not known um, but Either way, that is really, it's an estimation. That amount of labor, that amount of walls is really immeasurable. Uh, you really can't estimate it. But, st um, but the walls of Benin are definitely one of the biggest accomplishments, mysteries, whatever you want to call it, of the ancient world. Here is an observation from a Portuguese ship captain. Uh, this came from the year of 1691. It goes, Great Benin, where the king resides, is larger than Lisbon. Lisbon, Lisbon is a coastal city in Portugal. So Great Benin is larger than Lisbon. All the streets run straight and as far as the eye can see. The houses are large, especially that of the king, which is richly decorated and has fine columns. The city is wealthy and industrious. It is so well governed that theft is unknown, 
and the people live in such security that they have no doors in their house. So, the walls of Benin most certainly offered its residents a great sense of security. Uh, a sense of security which, would, let's be honest, was not very common throughout the ancient world. That alone um, shows how impressive this piece of work was. It created many years of prosperity and security in that region. The next architectural feat shares some similarities to what we've already discussed. For one, just like the obelisks of Aksum, it is located in Ethiopia. Now I'm talking about the churches of Lalabella. The churches of Lalabella are found in a town sharing the same name, Lalabella, which was named after a late 12th century king who commissioned the church project. Lalabella is one of Ethiopia's holiest cities, second only to the aforementioned Aksum. The city's population is predomin predominantly Christian. Ethiopia was one of the earliest African nations to adopt Christianity. Uh, this occurred in the 4th century. The idea behind this project commissioned by the king was to recreate the holy city of Jerusalem. Now there are 11 churches in total, but the most impressive thing about these churches why we still talk about them today is the building method involved. Now today we have Google Maps. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Um, now on Google Maps there's a, an even more impressive option called Street View where you can go along the street as if you're walking down the street. You can see it from the view as if you were right there. Now if you were to go to Lalabella on Google Maps and go to Street View, try to look at one of these churches, well guess what? You wouldn't see anything. Now why is that? Well, these churches were not built like any building that you may be familiar with. Instead, they are carved into the ground. Very impressive work. Um, the only tools they had were you know, hammers and chisels, essentially. So, the churches also offer a similarity to the walls of Benin. This is due to the fact the churches are actually an interconnected structure. Each one of these churches are connected to each other um, through a system of various tunnels, trenches, even drainage passages. The unique style of this building further demonstrates how impressive African architecture was. I wanted to demonstrate the extremes of African architecture and I believe these three were some of the most captivating examples of creativity. Now, I haven't even touched on Egypt in this video. I encourage you to do some research on your own and 
you'll be blown away by how well built many of the pyramids, the sphinxes, the temples of Egypt are. In fact, we would have a lot of trouble um, trying to make them today. 